Betty Lou, thank you for inviting us into your home. We appreciate it. First of all, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I have a lot of family support, a lot of friends around me, and that helps an awful lot. Tell us about your decision to succeed Alex in the assembly or to attempt to succeed him. Well, you know, everything happens fast in the world of politics. And despite the fact that I was in the middle of being stunned and devastated over the loss of my husband, I understand. I mean, I've been around politics most of my life. So I understood the importance. And the first thing I did is I sat down with my children and we talked about it. And um, because of my deep roots in the community, growing up and living in Morris County my entire life, and also knowing Passaic and Essex County because of the many positions that I've held, we decided as a family that um, it would be Look, no one can fill Alex's shoes, but what I can do is build off of his legacy. And that was why we decided that it was a family decision for me to do this. How involved in his political life were you? Well, Michael, Alex was totally into his position, whether prior to being leader and then being leader. So on an everyday basis, um, it was a life we lived together. We were a team. We were very good about uh, talking on issues to each other. Um, he respected the fact that I had a lot of knowledge on the local level. So he would always discuss any legislation. He would bring it home and say, take a look at it. What do you think? And of course, I would give him my opinion. And sometimes I would be very, I was an advocate for the municipalities and, and what was going to hurt them. And I would tell him. and. He would talk back in the sense of discussion and um, then come to a, a decision on his own. I would never, you know, tell him, well, you have to do that. Have I been passionate about issues to him? Absolutely. You'd read about the issue you, or you'd read the actual bill itself? Oh, I'd read the actual bill. What is your background professionally? Well. I grew up in a political family. My grandfather was a Republican councilman for oh, 30, 35 years in Rockway Borough. My grandmother was an aide to Peter Freelingheisen. I had deep roots that way. Um, as a little girl, went door to door with my grandfather for his elections, was in hat shows, fashion shows, clam bakes, Morris County Fair, sat in the Republican booth with my grandmother. And um, at the age of 18, she had me work in the polls. Let's stop. Is it finished? Yes. And how about as an adult? What what did, what have you done? In my twenties, uh, uh, in Mine Hill Township, I lived with um, my two my two little my children were little at that point, and um, I had issues were, with what was happening in town. I didn't like what I saw happening and um, kind of a resident challenged me and said, well, if you don't like it, do something about it. So I did. I ran my own campaign. I did my own campaign brochures, opened up my own elect account, and I ran against an incumbent Republican. For the town council? For the town council. And you won? I beat him. Uh, have you had other jobs in municipal government since yes. then? Yes. I moved into Roxbury Township in 1983, and within three months of being there, the uh, mayor appointed me to the planning board as a class four member. So I was a full-fledged member of the planning board in Roxbury Township for four years. Um, have you been in municipal government steadily ever since? Yes. I became the municipal clerk in, uh, Jan on January 1st, 1988, and as municipal clerk of Roxbury Township, I served as deputy manager, interim manager, acting manager. I was assessment search officer, public information officer. I was licensing officer. I also served as a commissioner for the town on the Mars County Joint Insurance Fund from 1999 till I left to work at DCA. I also served in the capacity as um, a commissioner on the North Jersey Health Insurance Fund and chaired the Finance Committee. In 2007, I became the first female chair for the Mars County Joint Insurance Fund.
that was in existence for 27 years and I was the third chair and the first woman and I was elected by all 40 of my colleagues unanimously. So is it fair to say you know government? Including in that, as I um, worked in Roxbury Township, I volunteered for 11 years right up until I left to work in D at DCA um, for the Township of Persephone where I reside on the Board of Adjustment. So you've been selected to replace your husband, mm -hmm. um, but you'll have to run for the seat Yes. presumably in June and November. Yes. Will you be challenged by Larry Kasha in a primary? I have no idea at this point. You might be. You never know. Um, when will you be sworn in? I'm hoping, uh, it's supposed to be confirmed, but I believe February 16th, that's a full session day. So I believe that's when it's going to be. Um, to what extent do you think about other women in a similar situation who have stepped into the seat vacated by their husbands? I can think of a few right off the top of my head. Nancy Munoz. Nancy Munoz in the State Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Lynn, Cunningham. S Sandra Cunningham also in yes. the state legislature. In the legislature. I mean, her husband was politically um, the mayor. He was and, the mayor uh, of Jersey City yes, and was. a state senator. Yes, he was. Um, I think nationally, Lindy Boggs took over from Hale Boggs mm -hmm. when he was lost in a plane crash. Yes, he, she did. Uh, Gene Carnahan took over from Senator Carnahan of Missouri three weeks before his election when mm -hmm. he suddenly died. Yes. Um, do you identify with those women? Yes, I do, because I have to believe, like myself, they were very involved. If you're a very supportive wife when your husband is in politics, and you're doing it with him, you're gonna know everything that's going on. So I always did. Did Alex and I always agree on issues? No, but that is for great debate and that's where good decisions end up coming from. So yes, I, I believe if they pursued it and, and obviously they were successful, it was because they had a strong conviction in themselves that they were capable to you know, not replace their husband and just step in their shoes, but to, like I feel, build on a legacy. You say build on a legacy. What does that mean in concrete terms going forward? What do you want to do as a state assemblywoman? Well, my husband was an advocate for crime victims. And in my career as well, I served as a trustee for the New Jersey Crime Victims Law Center. And um, I followed Alex with that. So I have a strong, strong feeling in that area. I also, uh, I have a strong feeling with women's issues. So um, at my job at DCA, I oversaw the Division of Women and in fact was the acting director for most of my tenure there. So I, I would look forward to working on those issues as well. Well, we look forward to observing you uh, at work in the assembly and wish you good luck. Thank you, thank you so much.